whatever body you're in, we're trying to reach more of a divine feminine global or universal energy for healing, for forgiveness, compassion, less of the 3D linear, got to do this, got to achieve that and just be that love. And I guess traditionally women have had that love associated with the mother, but it's, we all have a feminine side, everybody. And it's accessing it and developing it and knowing we could heal a lot of things if we activate the divine feminine. You all have within us a thirst for the divine. And so when you look at indigenous cultures or ancient civilizations, they had much better ways of, of honoring this connection, you know, through ceremony, uh, through individual practices. They, they totally got it. And this, this aspect of their, of their being was, was fed. Spirituality itself is such an essential part of healing, but also of, of consciousness you know, of, of who we become in this lifetime, what kind of people we become, what we contribute to the world, uh, you know, uh, how we are in our interpersonal relationships, you know, all of this. I, I do think that, that spirituality is such an incredibly powerful component uh, because of its, its, uh, its healing um, function, abilities which to me brings right back down around to your first question about the divine feminine, because what does the divine feminine represent but that light, that light of healing, that light that is taking us out of darkness. The challenge is, is um, and this is a challenge that I think, you know, like female CEOs, Etc. faced for a long time is how do you embody those feminine principles in a world that has been primarily masculine and stay true to oneself and still have that, you know, but still be seen as strong. So are, are you, you know, and I mean, that's, and that's where like I said, I, I, you know, for me, I just think of divine, you know, and that we should ideally have a, you know, like we, I mean, we all contain both, but, you know, and we might be way in one way or, you know, one direction or the other, but um, being able to have a balance without, sac you know, it was kind of like I was talking about the toxic femininity so being able to get one's needs met without having to cry, being able to, you know, um, lead a nation without having to, to play like the boys. Well, divine feminine energy number one is not confined or contained to anyone's gender identity or sexual orientation. It is and should be applied to every single person because it's an energy, this goddess energy that lives and breathes within every single one of us. The reason why you want to work on activating this divine feminine energy or lean into this divine feminine energy is because it will allow you to live and breathe a very full life and also be able to give to so many while you're here on earth at the very same time. If you're able to balance your divine feminine with your divine masculine energy, another energy that is present within you, I promise you life will ebb and flow and be easy and effortless. There will be a lasting, wonderful impact that it is that you will leave here on earth. Very little people have a true understanding of what it means to be in the divine feminine energy. 
And this is a very logical consequence of the society that we live in, which is patriarchy. The divine family rarely gets promoted. The divine feminine energy is such a powerful energy, but not in the sense of the word power as you know it. We associate power with force, but the power of the feminine energy is in her love and her nurture. And if we were to implement this on a societal scale and have women in leadership position ruling from their divine feminine and not the masculine, this would rule out wars. This would kill patriarchy. And the divine feminine has the power to completely shape the divine masculine, but not from force from love and from nurture.